And is that the right one? What is it? I can't spell. Yes. So the mechanical curator, not only tweeting about it, but um, publishing it to Tumblr, images it finds interesting or of a similar nature. So it's tagging them as such. That's fine. It's posting an image an hour. But we have 65,000 volumes to pull, to pull from that are in the public domain that are full of imagery. Um, very full, in fact. There are 1,019,000 images in those 65,000 volumes. And what I've been doing for the past two weeks is putting them on Flickr. So we have uh, 1,019,000, actually 200, not 993. By my reckoning, there's about uh, 1,019,200 images up there. And they cover the gamut of, um, well, as you can see just by scrolling down, we have music, we have images, we have illustrations, we have portraits, maps, um, and they're all public domain. This is a bit of a pre-release because we're still waiting for Flickr to flick the switch and put this account in the comments. However, the actual, mit <coughs> excuse me, the actual metadata, the um, links, everything like that, indicates it is in the public domain. There's a notice on the BL website which also confirms it. Um, we're just waiting for Flickr to get rid of this horrible thing down here um, of all rights reserved. There's no rights. Don't worry about that. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can sit here and browse it. Browse it by date, by book. Um, so if you're very interested in a certain book, you can look at all the images and grab them all, um, which is useful in a sense. Um, but sometimes you just want a bit more data. So on our GitHub, there is image directory, which has um, <coughs> spreadsheets of all the images, which you can grab and explore, um, has details in there about the book it came from, uh, the ID, the URL linking directly to the image, um, first author, title, publisher place. Um, there is no problem with sharing these. These are all useful. Um, what we would like is, this is a very soft and perhaps just an ethical plea that if you do use them, let us know. We want to see what's happening with them. We want to help people work with them. We want to, as my blog post which I've just put out, we want to take the million first steps with these images and then progress on from there to try and curate them. So we're looking at um, ways to crowdsource what's actually in the images because the things we do have are the information about the book it's come from so we might be able to understand that this is a book of the history of uh, New Spain but we may not know that it contains a vast amount of uh, somewhat macabre but fascinating imagery if you open the book it, it's quite staggering what's actually exposed in here um, hundreds of these uh, images of life from that era so this is a new way of looking at the books we don't know exactly what's in there, so we would like people to help us find out ways of exposing it, building narratives around it, understanding why these images exist, as well as how we can use them for research, education, and for artistic works. Um, and I think that's most of what I can talk about here that makes sense. Um, obviously, Flickr, we have an API, we've got the data there. And hopefully, for the rest of this day, we can work out different ways of using and exposing. Um, well, if I say computer vision, hands up who would understand what I meant by that? So I'm starting at the top end. And, right. Uh, who knows about image magic with a K on the end? OK, so similar hands, same hands. Um, there are a number of what you might call uh, low-level tools in dealing with images. So we've been trying to explore different ways. Um, part of the mechanical curator was to try and pull out faces from the portraits and from the items. Uh, I found it quite difficult to train it because obviously a lot of the training sets before are based on photos. Um, we just didn't have a large enough set of public data of portraits to train a new uh, learning machine against but now hopefully amongst the million images we should have enough portraits to 
at least do it by style, if not by the box set. Um, the code that we're doing, uh, that we're building as part of BL Labs, are going up here on our GitHub page. Um, so there's a few things in there about uh, the tools we can use. Uh, but fundamentally, we're trying to use as little bespoke software as possible, trying to reuse as much of what is existing, uh, generally the computer vision softwares that are around. Uh, there are sp other tools to expose trends, um, which there was a recent one that came out that, uh, I forget the name of it now, sadly, um, but I'll look it up and put it up in a few minutes' time. Um, but it was a way of visualizing uh, thousands of images through various indexes, and if someone knows what I'm talking about, they can fill me in later. Okay, so. um, if anyone has any questions, obviously we'll have a discussion during the cake session. Um, but Sam, if you want to talk about the yeah. other tools. So I've got to uh, qualify what I say here now um, with the fact that um, I am not um, I'm not a developer myself. Um, I'm sort of a I like to call myself kind of a non-technical geek, um, but I do uh, work with many of my good friends at the Open Knowledge Foundation and in my spare time who are um, far better place. But I do I do sort of, I am involved in the sort of community coordination of sort of people interested in this and. Very fortunately, we're joined today by um, Peter Murray Rust, also from the Open Knowledge Foundation, who is um, who knows about some of these uh, tools a little bit better than myself. So the two ones that I think might be relevant on the back of what um, Ben has just said, um, I think the first of which is basically crowd crafting, um, and I know that there's kind of one of the one of the themes that was picked out. Uh, by Mahendra earlier on today was of course uh, trying to leverage the power of the crowd and crowdsourcing for uh, image tagging um, and identifying you know basically these tasks that we might sifting through these vast amount of images that might require a human assistance um, and crowd crafting is basically a platform that enables you to code up um, in JavaScript I believe um, basically a crowdsourcing app so if you go to the main page here, I know some of you are struggling to get um, onto the internet. There, you, there's basically been a whole array um, of examples and applications of this uh, so far. Um, I'm just trying to think what are the really, um, I mean, there's some things, things as sort of <coughs> mundane as, you know, identifying a person on Flickr um, to something that has, you know, immense sort of potential like sort of civic uh, value, uh, which is uh, someone's coded up something uh, where you kind of need, where you basically identify where a green space um, is within uh, in within a city. So you can't. So basically, you know, potentially helping um, urban planners and so forth um, gain feedback on that. Of course, for us, um, it's a slightly different application. I think what we might be doing might be sort of, for instance, transcription or identifying um, a given style uh, for something. Um, sort of a bit stuck here. I'll go back. Um, um, but yeah, no, we have other applications. For instance, someone here, I'm not sure exactly uh, how far they've got, but has uh, tried to build a PDF table uh, transcription app. So, you know, the, there's, there's a big problem with um, extracting sort of semantic or like meaningful data from PDFs. Um, and this is basically a tool that um, enables um, people to kind of a bit of human assistance to for machines uh, reading this. So, um, Kind of the applications really are limitless for this. It really depends. It um, really depends what you want to do. And I think from what Ben and Mahendra have shown us so far, there are many different ways in which we can think about um, getting the crowd uh, more involved, um, uh, crowdsourcing some data. So I definitely think this might be a useful place for people uh, who want to explore that aspect of things to start. Um, so, yeah. 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 Please. So, yeah. Uh, so I went to a t tutorial um, on this that the creator Daniel uh, Lombrado Gonzalez uh, did, and um, it's very simple to do. Uh, you know, uh, get off the ground if you've got images. You make a list of your images, upload them to a site, and then you have very simple questions like, does this image contain an A or does it not contain an A? Whatever. So. I don't think that I'm qualified quite enough to do it in half an hour here, but
but it's well worth um, having a go at. You know, if you want people to classify images, that almost comes out of the box. Yeah. It's also got tools for identifying them. So if you go to the African Hut one, I think that's right. Um, I hope that's the one I'm thinking. Rural geolocator. Try that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's been completed. That's why we can't show it. But basically, it was um, satellite maps of uh, Kenya and you had to pick out where the houses were and you could just click on them. So there are very simple things like, is this an A or B? Um, click on the something or draw a square, a rectangle around the something. Yeah. And they've got excellent tools for uh, keeping score. You know, there's this uh, nice competition about who's the leader and things of that sort. Yeah. So sort of introducing, I suppose, a degree of sort of game, <coughs> gamification to keeping yeah. people engaged. Um, in classificatory tasks, it might be quite interesting to um, co-develop controlled vocabularies in the final. Yeah, no, that sounds like a really interesting um, application. Um, so of course, you know, also the platform itself is open source, even if people want to hack away at that as well. But I suppose it's kind of a, an enabler. Um, for people to make things. So yeah, mull that over, have a think about that. I mean, um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of other, other tools that um, either have been kind of funded projects hosted by the Open Knowledge Foundations as collaboration with, say, for instance, the, uh, the Centre for Citizen Cyber Science, or um, just basically coded up in, um, in people's spare time. Um, another one that I might want to, that might be worth just sort of briefly uh, looking at um, that I really, I've really enjoyed actually in terms of a narratives um, uh, which recently got renamed from the timeliner to the time mapper and um, it's basically a very very easy to use um, tool um, for uh, visualising um, uh, timelines which you create in Google Documents so um, just to give you uh, a quick um, example um, I mean, basically, what, what you have here is you, is you basically create using the template that they give you on the website, <coughs> um, which has a number of um, has just a number of fields such as that you have to put in like date, geolocation, um, a description, a link to an open image. Um, you there, you put that in your Google spreadsheet, and then you publish from here. Um, providing you need to you need to publish your Google spreadsheet to the web, and then what you get, um, that we've got a few sort of out of the box examples. This is one I made actually, the medieval philosophers one. Um, but you basically just get a really beautiful um, timeline from it, which you can share with people. So this is I basically mapped um, uh, using a Google spreadsheet, um, just kind of basic information that I pulled from Wikipedia and from I'm a, I was a philosophy student from my time there um, and you know it's a way in which kind of finding I mean this is a sort of fairly kind of generic sort of application of it but I could imagine different applications of this for sort of displaying narratives or ways round um, a given collection perhaps the kind of images that we're pulling from yes. the mechanical curator and of course this is also very customizable and very an open source so one could find ways rather than running it with Google spreadsheets finding you know sort of automating um, the creation of these uh, timelines in some way um, so that's another one uh, timemapper.okfnlabs.org is where you'll find it but I mean this what, what I really like about this one is that at least it doesn't really require any technical expertise at all to get get running with and creating something nice and shareable um, so yeah I think that those are the two that I was planning on focusing on. I don't know if there are any sort of questions that I might be able to help or people with about. Yeah, questions or suggestions, yeah, exactly. No, all right, well, um, oh yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just gonna say, um, Sarah, I mean, you've done some stuff with um, some of the BL images. Um, <coughs> Sarah will get gray in the corner. Um, and Kate Lomax. They entered the BL Labs competition mm -hmm. uh, last year. They didn't win, but they, they won in another, another way because they got funded through an AHRC project. And they were working with um, some of our images from a collection called the Abandoned Collection. Do you just want to say a little bit about what you did? <coughs> Hi there. Hi. 
Sorry about that. Recording. Okay. Um, so we were interested in particularly with the Ivanian collection mainly because it has it's, it's an ephemera collection. Um, and looking, looking, we went to look at it. What was really interesting and fascinating about it was you had the basic set of metadata, but within the actual objects themselves, anything from playbill posters, lecture tickets, I realized there was a whole lot of other information contained in that, either as a, a you know, visually oriented or as text um, that could be drawn out. So we were looking at trying to do something with that stuff. Um, we then ended up, as part of the AHRC project, working with um, the East India Office collection, so it's a series of oil paintings. Um, and we've actually used the Timeliner um, as part of that, and we've also got a kind of uh, map on there, so the idea is that people can explore that collection instead of via necessarily just looking at the metadata per se, or looking for a particular keyword. You've also got the ability to um, look through it via a visual orientation on a map, a world map, um, or you've got the timeliner, or you've got the actual kind of, a, we did a slideshow of the images themselves, and then there's also the additional typical keyword searches, etc. So it was a way for us of being able to create narratives through these different ways into the collection. Um, and then we've also implemented bits and pieces like annotation, so people can add their own little annotation to, to the painting to say why they've selected it. And basically the idea overall was um, I stuff around digital objects and storytelling. Um, and that's the area that we're interested in amongst many others. So come and talk to us more about that if you'd like to hear more. Okay, something that hit my radar about a week ago was um, this from the Software Studies Initiative. Um, they've put out a number of tools for visualizing large sets of images. Uh, either from video walls, but also um, from the tools uh, like Image Plot, which allows you to uh, produce graphs of the images you have uh, by splitting it along 39 different types of criteria you can choose from uh, in terms of image analysis. Uh, so this also might be a useful tool that people might want to look at and explore in relation to the set. Um, one thing I didn't say before is we do have all the images for people to come and grab because obviously on Flickr it can be a hassle um, but the problems are simply logistical. The images are 383, 583 gigabytes uh, and that's me cutting them down and compressing them so they're quite hard to transfer off um, which is why we tried to put it up to Flickr to share the load. Uh, we have them on a network attack storage box uh, along with um, OCR uh, text that has been pulled from the books themselves, which is obviously uh, open for use, public domain again, and also the Alto XML, which is an XML form that marks up the pages with where it believes words are and also where it believed illustrations may be, which is how I came to find all the illustrations in the book. Um, so those are additional things I didn't mention before, but that's where it is. The Alto XML is actually 1.2 terabytes in size, so that's also uh, a bit problematic to share. <coughs> but we're open for any suggestions on how we might do that. Okay. So, um, so 